Hey guys, Zom Fox here, and today it's time to do the Week 9 betting picks for the 2023 USL season. Last week was a Southern Sweep in the last interdivisional matchup week we had, so this week we're back to the divisional matchups with actual games that have legit playoff implications. So, without further ado, let's get started with the first game being the Michigan Panthers versus the Pittsburgh Maulers. This game is one that the Panthers, if they win, they potentially will clinch pending a Stars victory over the Generals, and the Maulers would be eliminated if they lose. However, if the Maulers win, then both teams still stay in the hunt for the playoffs no matter the outcome of any other game. The Panthers are minus one in the favorites, which I don't think is too surprising. The money line has them at minus 123 to the Maulers 105, plus 105, and the over-under is 41. So overall, what I would say for this one is that it is a tough matchup because you have two teams that both can look very different in every week. But I'm going to go with the one team that has shown the most consistency, and that's the Panthers' defense. And because of that, I'm going to go with the Panthers to win this game. I think the Panthers are going to look at this week as a huge week for them. A win here nearly guarantees them the playoffs. Nearly all that You'd have to have a lot of things go wrong for them next week and a couple games for them to miss the playoffs if they win this. So for all intensive purposes, this is like a win and in type of game. So I think the Panthers are going to do everything they can to win this game now to make sure they clinch the playoffs. The over-under at 41 is going to be an over for me. I think that this game is going to have over 41 points scored. I don't think it's going to be 41 or less. I think it's going to be over 41. The just I feel like that the Panthers' offense is going to actually show up this game, and it's going to be one of those games where the Maulers' offense actually does something, but their defense does nothing. And in the end, it's going to be the guys like Breland Speaks, Frank Gidna, who do enough for the Panthers to get the win over the Maulers. So I have the Panthers winning this game. I think this is going to be, honestly, the game of the week, potentially. I personally would see this as the game of the week, even though there's a couple other really good matchups. I think this overall is probably the best game. Then the second game is the Breakers at the Showboats. So the only thing that happens here is that if the Breakers lose this game and the Stallions win, the Breakers are eliminated from the playoffs. Because essentially the Breakers are at a point where if they end up losing this game, the only way they could really beat a tiebreaker is against the Stallions. So for all intents and purposes, like I said before, the Breakers basically need this win to stay alive. The spread is actually a pick em, even though the showboats are technically a little bit of favorites as they're minus 18 versus minus 105 for the Breakers. And the over-under is 43 and a half. Honestly, I'm a bit shocked that the showboats aren't favorites. I think it's just that nobody really believes in them. And it's, like I said last week, it's the Denver Nuggets syndrome. Despite the fact that they have been looking like the best or second best team in the league for the past like four weeks now, nobody's really giving them respect. So, I have the showboats winning. Look, I'm sorry, Breakers fans. I think your team gets eliminated from the playoffs this week. It's just, I think the showboats are just, they're clicking on all the cylinders right now. The Breakers barely escaped a game against the Panthers that should have easily won based on all the stats. If it wasn't for some late game mishaps, this, and especially, you know, literal last play interception by Josh Love, the Panthers could have won that game. And if they did, this would be a whole different conversation. So I think that the showboats end up getting the W against them to all but clinch themselves at the playoffs to make their Week 10 game essentially the winner-take-all type of game. The Showboats are looking at this as a potential ability to get a home field advantage in the playoffs. They have two games at home as their last two games. They win this one and they win the next one. They have a really good shot at getting that home field advantage. And I think it's going to be an over. I think that Cole Kelly does just enough to score, like, let's say 25 to 28 points. And knowing how they always play tight games, the Breakers will score like 19-ish. So I think this will be a game where it scores about 46 total points. Yeah, it's a bit of a risk, but I'm going to say that. I just think that overall, the Showboats are just a better team. I think that at this point, the Breakers, West Hills has not looked himself or MBT. MBT is looking a lot Kyle Slaughter-esque from last year, where he'll put up really solid like counting numbers, but efficiency-wise, he's really bad. So I have the Showboats winning. And then the third game is going to be the Houston Gamblers against the Stallions. This one is also at, M- at Memphis. Stallions do not have any home games remaining in the season unless they win the division. The Stallions are minus 3.5. Unsurprising. Makes sense. The Gamblers barely got away with the win over the Mars. They should have honestly lost that game. And the Stallions being 182 minus to the plus 140. The Gamblers make sense. And the over under 40 and a half, 45 and a half. I can see it. So overall, it's essentially, do you think the Gamblers are going to actually have a true full bounce back game where Kenji and Mark Thompson play really good the whole game? Essentially, this game is the game that's going to determine the MVP. 
If the Gamblers win this game and end up making the playoffs, Mark Thompson probably wins MVP for just how insane he's been, especially since he didn't even play two games of the season and he's put up the numbers he has. I mean, he's already scored like 13 touchdowns, which is like getting on to levels of like the original USFL guys who played 18 game seasons, and he's played or going to play only eight total. And the Stallions, Alex Magoo looks to be the MVP quarterback right now. He is the best quarterback in the league this year. And a win in this game all but solidifies him with MVP for, in the league. And I have the Stallions winning. I said it before, I think the Gamblers ended up missing the playoffs. I really do think it's going to be the Stallions and the Showboats in the playoffs. And it's just the last two weeks are to see which team wins the division. The Stallions are minus three and a half. I think they cover. I, I really do think they win this game by like four. I would honestly see them winning by like 10. I think this is going to be a game where both teams score high amounts, like 30 to 20 at the very least. But I think the Stallions overall get the edge in this one. I don't really see either of their teams defensive playing out of their mind, though I will say, I would not be surprised if this game ends up having less than, and I'm not kidding when I say this, less than 20 points scored. I honestly would not be shocked at that. This becomes a defensive war of attrition rather than the you know two MVP front runners going head to head. But I think that overall, this is going to be one of those games where it's Magoo versus Thompson. Which guy is truly the MVP? And I think that in the end, Magoo will pull out the W. And the game was end up missing the playoffs next week due to everything that'll happen. And the big question will be, what if Mark Thompson had played the first two weeks? Then the last game is the Stars versus Generals. Clinching scenarios. I forgot to mention the Stallions are a win and in for the playoffs. Yes. This is a win and in for the Stars. And the Generals, if they lose, they're out of the playoffs. So, the point spread is minus two and a half. The Stars are the favorites, though, just like with last week, I don't know how the Generals are still so high up on everything. And the money line has a bit minus 154 for the Stars and plus 120 for the Gens. And the all-run is 44. Like I said before, i am be real with you, I think that it's just that you got all the casuals, I guess, betting on the Generals. Look, the Generals are not that good. I think it was after they had that one loss... I believe the Panthers, where they pretty much were the better team the whole game and they lost, they just haven't been the same since that loss. And I think the Stars win this game. I think they cover. I think it's an over. And as you can tell by my predictions, I think the North Division is done. I think that this week the North Division is fully set as we have the Stars. Essentially, I think every team that can clinch this week clinches the playoffs. And every team that can be eliminated is eliminated. I say that just because I think that is the fact that the Stars just look so good right now. The Stallions are the best team in the league. I know RJ Young, you know, the USFL power ratings guy, has had the showboats at one for the past couple weeks. No, I think that at the moment, the the Stallions are the best team in the league. And the fact that the Stars did the best job against that Stallions team we've seen in a long time this year goes to show just how good the Stars are. A lot of people say the whole South is better than the North, which is not true. The Stars right now are the third best team in the league. I really don't understand arguments for anything else. I know some people say, you know, oh, but maybe the Gamblers made the breakers. No. Both those teams barely struggle to win against teams that have either been inconsistent or not that good all year, whereas the Stars against the best team in the league put up an insane fight and lost because of basically like an under one minute left touchdown. The Stars win this game. They clinch the division, potentially, but they do win this game. They clinch the playoffs and they end up making it. So in terms of my overall record, Last week was actually one of the best weeks I've had this entire year. Ironically, the area I usually do really good in was really bad. I went 1-3 in the money line. I bet for nearly a north sweep, and it was the opposite. But the spread and over-under actually went 3-1 and one in both of them. Even though I picked a lot of the north teams, due to how close the games were, we were really close in those. In fact, one of them I was on like half a point off. Same with the over-under. But the over-under, I ended up going 3-1 and one in that as well, which I haven't done that in a very long time. I think it was a lot of parts just due to naturally some luck. A couple of games were literally within like one to two points of that. But overall, I think it's pretty good. So that'll do it for this week's betting picks. Starting this weekend, potentially we'll start having, you know, the eliminated and clinched videos come out as well as, you know, three videos next week for the, the normal schedule. This has been Zon Fox. If you enjoy this content, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. And as always, have a great night.